In this video, we're going to clean up our template by separating it out into an external template. So to do that, I'm going to switch back to our index.html file. And for now, we're going to place it within here. So what we need to do is we're going to give it an ID. And let's think, what would this script ID be? Well, it's a template for displaying a person. So I will call it person template. Now, if we were to keep it like this, the browser is going to execute it just like it's JavaScript. But what we're doing here is we're adding a template. There is no JavaScript here. So what we need to do is give it a type that is anything other than text slash JavaScript. So in our case, you'll see it's fairly common to use text slash template. Now the browser will not execute anything in here as if it's JavaScript. So let's switch back to our main.js. And I'm going to strip all of this out. And within here, I'm just going to paste it in. There we go. Next, I'm going to save it. And now when we return to our project, rather than nesting the HTML, we're going to fetch it. So why don't we do this? There's a couple ways I'll show you how to do this. We can begin by fetching person template dot HTML like that. Let's come back to the browser and see if this is still working. I reload person view dot L and yep, we're getting the exact same thing. But now with very, very little work, we've separated it out into an external template. And that way we don't have all of this HTML in our project. And then when we do need to extend this and we do have images and alt text and anchor links and titles, all of that stuff would just ruin a JavaScript file or at least make it incredibly messy. But now we have nice contained templates. So if we know if we ever need to change the structure for this single person, this template is exactly where we go. Perhaps we need to change it to an M. Now we know exactly what to do, but I'll go ahead and backtrack. Now here's another way we could do this. What some people like to do is I'll comment this out and instead they will set the template equal to an ID. So we could say person template like that. And that way, you know, okay, this view, the template is the script with an ID of person template. And then they will compile it from the render method. So you could say this.html.template will be equal to, and we'll say var template equals underscore dot template, this dot template. So this is the exact same thing. Notice underscore dot template. The only difference is, and of course we need to go ahead and track that down. The only difference is that we're storing the hashed version rather than compiling it immediately. But then it's business as usual. This.html will be template. Let's try it again. Personview.l. And once again, append it to the body. And we're getting the same thing. In our case, though, my preference is generally just to go ahead and compile it at the beginning. And that way, my render method is as succinct as possible. But you're free to choose what you prefer most. So to begin leading into the next lesson, there's something I want you to think about. We now have one person. So if I were to duplicate this to create two people, well, then I would have to do person two and person view two, and then update this accordingly. Let's give this person two a name of myself, Jeffrey Way, and an age of 27. All right, so now we have this new person who's just using the defaults. He's a generic, boring person. And then we have person number two with some specifics. And now we have two views, person view L and person view two dot L. And now we have two different views containing the unique information. But then at that point, we would just have to, I don't know, what would we append this person view dot L and then do the same thing again? That doesn't seem like a very good idea. Well, of course it's not. So now we're getting to the idea that we need to have a way to store a collection of these people. Because right now, the best we could do maybe would be to create a variable called people and make that equal to person view, person view two. And now we have this sort of like in a collection, an array of different people. But the problem is we still don't get that nice flexibility that Backbone offers. So like models, collections do fire and listen for events. So a collection will fire an event when we add an item to the collection or add a model. Or what about when an item in the collection is changed or removed or destroyed? All of these things are really helpful to listen to. And if we use a simple old array, that's not going to be ideal. 
Well, luckily, Backbone offers sort of like an array on steroids, and it's called a collection, backbone.collection.extent, and we'll dive into those in the next video.